Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Nowakowski on behalf of Interline Creative Group and our sponsor, KB Resource, talking to you about one of the most exciting topics uh, you can have today is really your websites, uh, our websites. Boy, has the world changed since the last time I gave this. But we didn't change this. Usually what we're doing is updating it with uh, special emphasis on the COVID-19. But actually, this was always relevant. In fact, in all my webinars and teachings and courses, what I do is I basically say the most important marketing tactic you have is your website. And if anything, the virus has only accentuated that. So I'm so glad you're here. The room is still filling in. We see people coming in. So uh, I've tried to welcome everybody in time. I'm, I'm, it's a packed house. We're going to try to get through a lot of material today. If you have any questions, put them in the question box. I'll be happy to entertain questions at the end of it, during it. But right now, I've got to go through a few slides that are required by the AIA and NKBA to let you know that this is, for those of you in the audience, we have a, a diverse audience, this is an AIA and NKBA approved course. Even if you don't want the credit, you're going to walk away with a lot of, a lot of good ideas today. So welcome, everybody. Um, I, I think I'm being heard by everybody. If not, I don't see any... Uh, people saying that they need anything. So here we go. This is registered by the AIA. If you need the course credit, let us know your number afterwards. Send it to Sue at Interline Group. Make sure you get your certificate. Uh, we'll take care of you. This uh, is copyright. However, at the end of all my courses, I offer, if you request it, a PDF file of all the slides. But I encourage you to take notes, ask questions. This is not a monologue. This is a dialogue. Uh, it is sponsored by KB Resource. We're going to talk about them in a little bit at the end, uh, just a couple of uh, minutes, a minute if anything. It's also registered with the NKBA. And when we designed this course, uh, we wanted to navigate your business message. It's a daunting task trying to communicate, especially nowadays with the virus uh, and the lockdowns. There's lots of channels available. And what I, what I designed this course for when I created it were for, to help you think differently about the way you're representing your value proposition and your website presence. In fact, the website is the single most important marketing tactic in your arsenal. I, I'm going to say this more than once. You're going to get sick of me hearing it. Just don't leave the room. There's nothing more important than your website. But what I want you to do today is think about your value. What is your value? We're going to talk a lot about that today. So the learning objectives when we created it pre-COVID and then post-COVID is who's the, who are your customers? Who's your consumers? Who's your audience? Are they facility managers if you're an architect? Are they residential homeowners? More importantly, how do you define your value? How do you find your value, define your value? Value is one of those intangible words. We'll talk about that. And then we want to take your value that you find, and you're not going to find it today. But ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know your value already, that's okay. I'm not, you're, you're going to still understand everything I'm saying. We understand, we've been in business 30 years. We I found my value a long time before that, but my value has not changed. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, and then how do, you cons how do you translate that into your website? How do you use integrated marketing for that? So your website is more than just a, it's a, it's a, it's how you introduce yourself to your customers. People find you through Google. We're going to talk about that as well. But they find you through Google and your website is a way to introduce yourself to people through your website. The problem is you only have nanoseconds to do that. You have nanoseconds, ladies and gentlemen, in which to create and sustain an impression. So as we think about the websites today, I want you to really think about what is your services. I have appliance dealers. I have architects. I have engineers. I have um, interior designers, kitchen and bath designers, uh, independent business people, manufacturers in the audience today. And you all think you know what you do, but really you're all in the service business. And, and that's why when you see some of the statistics I'm going to show to you about how people find you on the website, it's going to be very important for you to understand how to translate your value and, and what you do. And how do you go to market? In the past, you used to do face-to-face -face communication. We just had a client who hired a regional manager, and 
from what we're seeing and what I'm hearing from my, my media outlets, the days of the regional manager traveling with the salespeople are limited because no one's seeing anybody. So why do you need a regional manager? I'm not saying you shouldn't hire regional managers. I'm just saying if you think about how, how your information for what you sell moves through the world these days, it's all going to lead back to your website. And, you, and in order to conduct business today, you have to have a website, not only a, a website, you got to have a robust website. And you got to think about your targets and, and things like that and responsible. So there used to be a movie in the 50s called Them. This was about giant ants, James Whitmore, uh, James Arness, the Gunsmoke guy, right? This is an old, old movie. And it had about giant ants because in the 50s, everybody was worried about radioactivity, radioactivity creating monsters of us all. It was a scary time. I lived through the scary time, you know. However, if you read some of this this copy on this poster, which is the actual poster from the movie, a horror horde of crawl and crush giants crawling out of the earth from mile deep catacombs. Think about that. Wow, there's a there's alliteration for you, right? Look at that little caption on the bottom. This city is under martial law until we annihilate them. Boy, is that a relevant headline today, isn't it? That's an interesting headline today. Don't you feel like that when you get a telemarketing call, although they're far and few and in between lately because of what's going on in the country? But you don't want to feel like them to your clients. In fact, if your clients feel like this about you, you're not going to be in business or have clients very long. So the questions we want to ask ourselves in terms of using websites to contact our clients is how often should you contact these people? How often should you be contacted by your clients? What is the exchange value? What's your value proposition to your customer? In the old days, the pitch was the thing. You'd go out and you try to sell things. Nowadays, before your phone rings, your prospect, your potential client, even your client, has already done his research on you. He's already found out about you. And if your phone is lucky enough to ring because of something you've done on your website or a referral perhaps, it's only because people have done their homework already. That's the mo one of the most important things you can take away from this is that you have to load your website with everything you can about yourself in a, in a presentation way, right? You don't want to just write, 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 although I'm a long copy guy. But you want to you want to give people something to digest because they are researching you. I'll give you a good example. We got a lead yesterday from an article that I was in 2009. This article was written by a friend of mine, Jim Lucy, the editor and publisher of Electrical Wholesaling Magazine. And he wrote it in 2009. The guy was looking for the topic. We're number one in the organic search when you look for manufacturer reward program. That article, Manufacturer Reward Program, is number one in the organic search. Forget about the ads. We're going to talk about all of this. And the phone rings. And there he is. I wasn't here, so one of our people, we have 15 people, took the call. And today the proposal is going out to him. This is what I'm talking about. Your website is the key. It's the key. It's the central key to open up doors for prospecting. 70%, right, of the links search users click on are organic search. You know, when you do a search in Google, Google controls the world. And I know there are no Google people in the audience, so I'm going to speak freely. I have a love-hate relationship with Google. I love Google because everybody uses Google. And I know if everybody uses Google, that's where I have to be on page one, right? And if I'm not on page one... I'm not. I don't exist. I'll never exist. So, but they also run a lot of ads. When you do a Google search, there's always ads. Guess what people have learned to do? Avoid the ads. Not only that, in this day and age, right, people go to the organic search beyond the ads. So you have to think, by organic, I mean you're not paying Google a dime. You're just there because Google puts you there because of your content. Ladies and gentlemen, the second most important thing besides your website, 
being the critical mass in terms of marketing that you have to understand is content is the key to Google. Content. Google, I'm going to say this more than once, Google reads everything. Should I repeat that? Let me do that. Google reads everything. So if Google reads everything, you have to put everything on your website about your value, right? 70 to 80 percent of users ignore these paid ads and 75 percent they never go past page one now i often go to page nine because i'm curious about what's on page nine that's just because of me i don't recommend you do that and certainly no one looking for your services is going to go to page nine here's a sidebar you know what a sidebar is it's like when the lawyers go up to the judge i want a sidebar and they talk quietly so that no one hears them so, oh, by the way, the U.S. adults are spending 10 hours and 39 minutes. In 2016, they spent over 10 hours a day, you know, on consuming media. That's an, that's an hour more than 2015. In 2017, it was up two more hours, right? And in 2019, it's up even more. So the question you have to ask yourself what what do you think is going on today with this COVID thing going on, right? For two months, everybody was online. Zoom, Zoom to the top in terms of a connection. By the way, this is not a Zoom meeting. This is go to webinars. That's the tool we use, which is a great tool. But people more and more are using the internet. In fact, companies today through our research, are going to be using people to keep them remote. They don't want them in the office, which is a huge mistake sometimes. Let me give you some examples. Plumbing showrooms in Chicago. This is what I Googled, all right, because I have a lot of showrooms in the audience. And so if I'm looking for a showroom and I happen to live in the Chicago area, I would go to Google and I would Google plumbing showrooms in Chicago. And this is what Google gives me. They give me an ad from Ferguson. They give me an ad from Studio 41. They give me an ad from... Consu you see the ads on the left? And finally, the organic search with Yelp, Crawford Supply, Ferguson, and Studio 41. So here's the first thing you can look at when you're looking at a page like this. Studio 41 is buying an ad, right? You see it says ad on the left. They also are strong in Google, in Google's organic search. You see Studio One, it's the fourth one in the organic search on the right. Here's your question, why are they paying Google to advertise? Do they think that anybody looking at this search result is going to click the ad or are they going to go to Yelp first? Now if you know what Yelp is, you might not even go there, but you might go to Crawford Supply. Or you might go to Ferguson, or you might go to Stu you see what I'm saying? But the page doesn't stop there. There's more to the page, and here's the rest of the organic search. Again, Studio 41. Studio 41 has got a lot of great content to bring the results to them when you Google plumbing showrooms in Chicago. So one of the things you have to understand if you're going to understand your website is how do people find you what words do they use what do they look for and we're going to talk about this but i wanted you to see the results of this because look on the bottom there's another ad google flanks their organic content with advertising that's why google is the richest company in the world one of the richest why because they use the results of their platform to sell advertising to sell words. You know, the words you buy, Google can suck up your budget for Google AdWords, you've heard this, faster than anything. But you're competing against organic content, not just other people that you think you're kicking. So here's what I did. I went to the first organic search with Yelp, and I clicked on it, and I went right to Yelp. And we all know what Yelp is. It's another platform. Only Yelp now is acting as a filter and filtering the showrooms in Chicago, and they use a headline called Best Bathroom Showrooms in Chicago. What if you're not there and you're a showroom? Why should you allow Yelp to decide that you're not the best? You see what I'm saying? Not only that, Yelp gives you all of these little locations, right? Now, I'm going to share a very deep, dark secret with you. Some of you may know it, but I don't know if you do. 
but this is one of the ways you're going to help you understand the importance of your website. I was told by my IT people not to share this, but I said, you know what? I have to share it because I learned so much from it. Here's the secret. Look at the upper right corner of your screen. When you do site colon yelp.com, which is really website address, site colon website.com, whatever Yelp is, if you look at right below that, it's going to tell you the amount of pages on Yelp. Now, why is that important? Because the more pages you have, the more likely you are to be found by the Google spiders, you see, and classified with your content. Yelp has 119 million pages. You could, if you started writing now, you couldn't finish in 20 years writing 119 million pages. That's why they're tops in organic search. But let's say people are wise to Yelp and they don't even want to go to Yelp. They go to Crawford Supply. Crawford Supply is the second highest search. Beautiful website. We're going to talk about websites today. How many pages does Crawford Supply have? 550. This is why the internet is the great equalizer. Size doesn't matter. Should I repeat that? Size matters, but it really doesn't matter. A 550-page website can be right below the 119-million-page website. You see what I'm saying? Because Crawford Supply has structured the content of their website to react to plumbing showrooms in Chicago. This is very important for you to understand on how to position your website. The third one was Ferguson, right? And Ferguson, right, has 353,000 pages. They compete with Crawford Supply and others of you in the audience, right? Ferguson is the largest distributor in the country, in the country. So they're everybody's competitor. And that's why they have a lot of pages. And that's why they're usually great in the organic search for words like plumbing showrooms in Chicago. The other ones that we were looking at, Studio 41, Studio 41, Howes and Kohler, have respectively Right? Studio 41 has 18,000. House has 7.5 million pages. House is one of the most robust. And I know designers are saying in the audience, well, I'm on House, but lately I don't know if I should be on House. I, that's another story and another discussion. The reason these are platforms, Studio 41 is indeed a showroom. House is a platform like Yelp. So you got to delineate between platforms and actually businesses. That's what we're talking about today. House has one of the richest visual sites in the world. Very visual. It was started by a couple in California who didn't know how to find products for their house, but that's another story. And it's a great website. But once you enter the platform, you're at the mercy of the platform, which is why your website is more important than any platform you can think about, including the social media platforms. We're going to talk about that. And finally, you've got Kohler Signature Group. Look at this. They only have one page, but that's an illusion. That's an illusion because Kohler itself has 82,700 pages. Now, why, why is Jim sharing all these pages with you and the secret to finding the pages, which is site colon and then put in the website. I'm sharing it with you because content counts. Nothing is more important than content. That's why it's there three times. Should I repeat that? Content, content, content. And linking. We want to be linking to things within our own website, outside our website. But content. Ladies and gentlemen, content is the key. If you Google conversation from hell, my article is number one, right? But I beat 201 million results. Now, I could tell you how that happened. I could tell you why it happened. I can tell you who cares because no one that I know would Google conversation from hell. But somebody would Google never lower your price. Someone thinking about, should I lower my price, right? Will Google Never lower your price. Someone will. Should I ever lower my price? If you Google never lower your price, 
The article I wrote a while ago is number one. That's what you want to do. It's not about what you sell. It's not about it's not about you. Your value is not about you. It's about what you know and demonstrating what you know in a way that no one else can duplicate and then getting people to your website. Your value proposition, what who you are, what you do, right? It's the customer experience. Value is an intangible word. So as you think about what you should put in front of people on your website, you have to be thinking about your value and why do people do business with you? It's not the fact that you're a great architect. It's not the fact, of course it is, but it's not. It's not your, your great products that you have in your showroom. It's not your superior services. Everybody talks about that same thing, right? There's something else. There's something else, and that's intangible. I told you before, our value proposition has not changed in, in 30 years. Service and unduplicated knowledge. That's Those are our pillars of our company, and we demonstrate that value continually, just like this webinar. I'm going to give you an awful lot of information for free. Information that has helped us grow, our clients grow, and therefore will help you grow. Now, why am I doing that? Because I'm sharing with you unduplicated knowledge. The site trick, site colon with the website, any programmer knows that. Any programmer knows that, but you don't know that necessarily because you're a designer, you're an architect, but now you know it. And now you know why it's important. So when you understand your value, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to use your products and services to stay in front with your value. I was on a webinar yesterday with Luxury Institute, a fine organization. And I asked them a question which they, they tried to answer. I Because they were promoting this. They were actually saying the same thing I'm saying. That we have to promote our value. We have to find our value and tell people what that is. So when I asked them, what is value? One of the, one of the panelists said value is when you give me a benefit that I hadn't anticipated, wanted, or met my need. In other words, it's the wow factor. Ladies and gentlemen, your website's not about you. It's about them. It's about the, them, you know, this poster. It's about your customers. The more you can hold up a mirror to your customers on your website and they say, oh my God, that's exactly what I was thinking. Oh my God, that's exactly what I thought. The more likely you are to demonstrate your value and you start the conversation. Value is a service, right? It's a service, or it's a convenience, or it's a reward, right? Okay, so I've got a trick here that I pull off when I do this webinar. I have arranged with GoToWebinars that in all of your rooms, I'm going to press a button right now, and I'm going to suck the air out of your room because I'm going to ask you for $10 and you're going to say, why would I give you $10 for the air I'm breathing? And of course, you're going to laugh at me because it's not true, right? But if I told you that I arranged tech, through technology that I'm going to suck the air out of your room and then ask you for the $10, you would inevitably give it to me once the air starts leaving the room, wouldn't you? Guess what? A commodity, air has no value unless you don't have it. Right? Am I right? If air has no value, unless I can't get it and I need it, it's a commodity. Don't be a commodity. Well, Jim, I'm a design studio. So are 200,000 other people. Well, Jim, I'm an architect. Well, so are to find your differentiation. Your value is something that's limited. You know the only limited resource in the world? One right, it's an it, right, it's time. That's why I'm so grateful you're giving me an hour of yours, and why I'm trying. I'm standing up, jumping around the room, trying to tell you what we know to help your businesses grow. This is a, this is the most difficult environment that I've ever been in in 30 years. I've been through 9 11, I've been through the depression of 09. This is very different, right? But we're moving forward. We have two new clients in the last three weeks right? Some through referral, but others just because we're doing the marketing. We're practicing what we preach. Find your value and make sure that people understand it's a value. What makes you unique? 
What do you do that your competitor isn't doing, doesn't do? What, what does your competitor do that you don't do? What can you learn from your competition? Why do, you, why do your customers like you? Why don't they like you? Why did they? I have one of my most famous articles is seven reasons to seven things they ask when you lose a pitch. You can probably Google that and find it. I have I have over nine thousand people who have read that article since I posted it. Not because pro, probably people are losing pitches. Of course, you win and lose, right? But they're reading it because I'm giving you information that actually will work for you so you don't lose so many pitches. That's the value we, that's unduplicated knowledge. And you may read it and say, well, Jim, I knew, I knew six of those things. But if I can give you that one, and that one can make the difference, you're going to remember that. So these questions about your value they're very difficult to ask very to ask and answer but you have to continually think about them what do i mean by service in our company i answer the phone in two rings we've done that for 30 years i can't tell you how many businesses how many new business pitches i've won because I'm pitching the business, I say that fact, someone in that room will pick up the phone immediately and call my office, and within two rings, someone answers it. Answers it. Do you know how impressive that is? Of course, I, I can't go to a room anymore, right? We're all virtual, they're not letting me in. So what makes your customers unique? Why do they, why do, they do what they do? What are people doing these days? Are they afraid? Are they fearless? What are they doing? And how is what they're doing going to affect how you do what you do? It's a lot of do's there, right? But you have to ask yourself that. Very, very important. I was on a design panel the other day, a Zoom, a Zoom meeting, right? It was great. Interior designers were talking. Guess what? Some of those interior designers are still walking into homes without a mask. One of them said, I hold up the mask to the client and I say, do you want me to put this on or not? Nine out of 10 said, no, don't put it on. I, I'm amazed by that because that's not what I'm hearing. You know, if you listen to the news, you go crazy, right? What I'm hearing in the, in, in the, in the news is that everybody's got to wear a damn mask, right? But that's not what I'm hearing when I talk to, the, to people like in my audience. What, you know, I, the other day we were talking to somebody and saying, well, I remember counter days. When they used to come to the counter, the contractors would come to the counter. Well, take the counter to them. Figure out a way to get to the job site because projects are still going on. And have your day, uh, the counter day right on the premises. Make arrangements with the owner and the architect you know, for lunchtime and do a little presentation on products. Don't let rules that are, that are harming business stop you. Work around the rules. Follow the rules. Be safe? Absolutely. But don't let anything like this stop you from trying to do business because people want to do business with you. Let's talk about a few websites. First of all, do I have any questions? I don't see any questions. I must be doing a heck of a job. Keep your questions in that question box. This is the last thing you want to do if you're developing your website. If you are developing your website and it's under construction and you put something like this on your website, do you think anybody would come back? Of course not. So if you're doing your website and you bought the domain and you're under construction, put something cool on it. What I did today is I took some of the attendee websites that time permits and I'm going to look at some of the websites and share with you some of the observations we can make on them. This is, you know, these are just random picks from the many people in the audience. So we have we have 3dddesign.com, this Canadian company. It's got a rolling screen, which is great, and it has a blog. The blog is the most important. I hate the word blog. I like articles or whatever, but I use the word. Blog is the most important thing because Google reads everything, ladies and gentlemen. I told you that before. I'm going to say it again. They split up their pages into services. They got different pages. The more pages you have, the better. They have a look at the navigation, about us, services, gallery, blog, the usual suspect. It's a very simple design. The navigation is simple, but there's a few things they could do to up their game. One of the things, if you look at it, if I do kitchen bath showrooms in Canada, right, they don't come up. House dominates like we talked about. 
And if you look at the number of pages that they have, they have 30, they have 43 pages. So my recommendations to you, 3D ID design, would be to get more pages. Just do more pages. Caption your photos. You have beautiful, beautiful imagery. But Google, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Google can't see a picture. They don't, they don't look at pictures. They read content. Make sure every image you have, either in front of the image, below the image, behind the image, has captions. Google reads everything. Bray Architects, beautiful website. This is a, it has a single page opener. It doesn't scroll like the others do. There's the, by the way, if you're looking for website platforms, we recommend WordPress. There's others, Drupal, there's others, uh, you know, GoDad, everybody has, you know, but WordPress is simple. If you understand Microsoft Word and you use Word, it's very easy to use. There's templates out the yin yang, and we recommend WordPress because that's what we use on all our of our clients when we get the jobs websites. We also use it on our websites. So Bray Architects, a very simple presentation, and this is a sizable architectural firm. Thank you for being in the audience, by the way, Kyle. This page count is good. If you look at the page count that they have, they have 230 pages. This is terrific. Because you want to be over 100. You got to have you got to have 100 or more, right? The navigation is simple. Find the words that you want to dominate. This would be my recommendation to Bray. Find the words you want to dominate, right? And then bury Google. Bury them. That's my last point to you. And find the content. As an example, if I Google architects in Wisconsin, your firm is nowhere to be seen. The only way you get on here is if you buy an ad, and we are not recommending you buy advertising from Google. What we are recommending is that as you scroll through here, you can see Howes, Wisconsin Architect, the AIA, Wisconsin. You're members of the AIA, so they give you a little link from their website, but you're not there. Your actual website is not there. That's okay. That's okay. Because how many people are going to search for the name of your company? That's a question for everybody in the audience. You think, well, yeah, they're going to search for you. They're not going to search for the name of your company. They're going to search for a problem that they're trying to solve. Should I repeat that? They're going to search for a problem, just like I mentioned before, manufacturer reward programs. That's what that manufacturer was looking for. He was looking for reward programs, which happened to be one of our, you know, core competencies. We run SPIF programs, and he found us. So if you Google renovating high school gyms in Wisconsin, congratulations, Kyle. There you are. You're on the bottom there. See, I circled it. Bray Architecture. Because of the content on your website. You should have a meeting with your staff, talk about how people look, what are the problems people face, and then bury Google by writing content around that. I hope that helps. Think about how people search. This is across the board. You have to think, like never lower your price. People are looking for those words, a pricing strategy, right? Another one, Cabinets by Design out of Central Iowa in Des Moines. Welcome back. These people have been in my webinar before, and I want to show you something that somebody out there listens. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> they do, because this is what their website looked like before my last webinar on this, and this is what it looks like today. That's an applause. That's a, that's a terrific, that's a terrific improvement from before. I feel like an eye doctor now, right? Before, look at they only had three pieces of navigation, gallery testimonials. Now, look at their navigation. They've got a blog. They've got a staff. They've got testimony. This is unbelievable. This is a great improvement. They added the blog. But they can use more pages. They only have 21 pages. I'm not saying they don't get found. They've got good navigation, and their SEO is good because it's a very specific location. But if you want to dominate Google, you need more pages. So start taking those testimonials and breaking them apart into separate pages. Start taking your products and breaking them apart into separate pages. I don't know how easy it is to use because I didn't investigate what you built your website in, but that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Certified Interiors, great designer. We know about them. They have a rolling screen 
but one big page. It's one big page. If you look at how many pages they have, they also have 47. So we would recommend captions for your photo. Social is on the bottom. We would bring that up to the top, perhaps. And you have beautiful images, but you need content. Remember, image. You know, wait, wait, Jim, wait. Isn't there a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words? There is. But guess what? Guess what? Google doesn't see the picture. I told you this. Write the thousand words. Well, Jim, that's too long. No. If it's compelling copy, someone will read it. And if no one reads it, Google reads it. Google indexes it. And the next thing you know, you're on page one. I'm telling you, it takes longer. SE, good SEO takes a long time, two to three months sometimes. But once you're there, it is very difficult to dislodge you. Very difficult because you start owning those words. Try aging in place marketing, marketing to the aging in place. Try that. And you'll see a blog that's on our sponsor, KB Resource, that is number one. It's been number one on a search. And everybody's interested in the aging in place marketing, right, in the market. I mean, who is not aging in place, right, or living in place? Don's Appliances, welcome. That's a premature clap, Don, because you've been in my audience before, and this is your new site. What an upgrade. It's just a tremendous upgrade. Your SEO is unbelievable. If, Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to look for good SEO, look at the number of pages Don has. 2,000 pages. Well, you could say, well, he's a, he's a, he's a dealer. He's got all these products. He does. But you have all those services. You have a lot of products you can talk about. You have a lot of projects you can talk about. There is no limit to the data. Right? The question is, how much you get, How much time do you have to put it up there, right? DRG Designs. Great website. Very easy to use. If you build it, they will come. Maybe not, because that's all you have. You need content. But thanks for coming to the audience. Hospitality Design Experts. You need content. And finally, Novus, a research and marketing who are built. This site is currently under construction. Great. You see how it is down there? You want to bring that up and let people know you're building it. If you build it, they will come eventually. But you're going to need content. I have a lot of people in the audience that did not give me their websites. I chose randomly. I chose from as many as I could because there's a lot of people in the audience. And I will certainly be able to talk to you after the presentation in order to talk about yours specifically if you want to. If you want to. So these are the people that are in that gave me the emails. And I have too many to talk about. But if you're interested for a quick overview, send me an email. I'll give you my email address. Give us a call. We'll arrange a time. And just remember, ladies and gentlemen, Google reads everything. Quick checks. Check your spelling. There's nothing that'll turn someone off more than a misspelled word. I know it seems crazy when nobody cares about spelling when we're texting each other. But believe it or not, there are still some people out there that get annoyed when you misspell a word. Look at what others do. Don't just limit it to your own industry. If you're an architect, don't just look at other architect sites. If you're a designer or interior designer, don't just look at other people like yourself. Well, Jim, didn't Benjamin Franklin say birds of a feather flock together? Well, he did. But, but if you're going to differentiate yourself, you want to go outside your comfort zone and start looking at what other people do. One of my favorites is fashion, the business of fashion. That's BOF, if you Google it. That's a great website for ideas. Fashion is sometimes crazy, right? But it, the business of fashion talks about business. Dates on your content. Put dates on your content. Look at the load times of your website. Sometimes you're using a platform that just takes too long. Or your connection is not good. Don't. And if you have empty pages, you're wasting your money. Who do you want to visit you? Structure your copy to talk to the people you want to visit you. Not everybody. You, don't, you couldn't handle a billion hits. You couldn't do it. And you don't want business from everybody. You only want business from people who will pay you money for what you do. 
Well, Jim, you're giving us a lot of good information for free. You're not charging me anything. Well, that's because I'm an older guy, right? And something, I believe in this, something good will happen because of what we're doing today together. I believe that. And it's already been proven to me time and time again. You may not believe it, but that's okay. I'm not here to please everybody. Are you? What are your, what are your audiences looking for? So, don't forget the blog. The website is the central point of contact. Any questions? We have about 20 minutes. Perfect. No questions. I can't believe it. Really? Put in the question box, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. How do, you, how do we do what I've been talking about? You start with a plan, right? You don't just start doing things, although you could, but you need a plan. You jump into any effort with a proper research and planning. Look at what other people do. Borrow some ideas. Start talking to your staff. Start talk, Don't talk necessarily to your relatives, but talk to the staff. Call up people. Call up some of your customers. Start saying, what, what would you expect in my website? You've been to my... I was in a meeting, a pre-virus meeting, with the client, our prospect actually, for a $20,000 research project. We met for two hours in our conference room when meetings were in vogue. And at the end of the meeting, I'm ready to ask for the order. And I said, is there anything I can you know, tell you to, to conclude this deal today? And he calmly thought for a minute, he was a great guy. Uh, he said, no, Jim, he says, everything I wanted, I found on your website. In fact, Jim, I didn't know companies like yours existed until I found your website. Ladies and gentlemen, not only did we sign that deal, it, it, it gave me total confidence in, in the website importance because when you, when you get a comment like that from an un, un, you know, unsolicited about your website, you know you're on the right track. So some people, I had the other guy the other day, I was talking to him, he was trying to sell me a platform, right? Nice man. I said, so honestly, what do you think of our website? And he goes, well, it's a little, you know, for me, it's a little dated. He was a young guy. I said, I, he says, you know, it's, I saw exactly what you do. I, I, you know, I, I reviewed everything and I saw clearly what you do, but it was a lot of copy. I said, that's okay. I appreciate the feedback. You know what? It was great feedback because I don't, he's not going to buy my services, but if he can tell me what I do after visiting my website and he doesn't want to buy me, I call that a success. In direct response, they call that a no. But ladies and gentlemen, here's another secret. The sales begins when the customer says no. I see a question. I see a question. I got to get this question. What do you feel so strongly that we shouldn't buy advertising on Google? Karen, thank you. Thank you for being in the audience. I was chatting about you earlier with the audience. I told them you got the greatest software in the world for tracking legislation at the federal and state level. I feel so strongly about buying Google AdWords. I'm not that strong. I will buy Google AdWords when, when it's required by a client. I feel much more strongly because people avoid ads these days. They're going for the organic content. They're going for to read the solution. They don't necessarily want the ad. Now, we can, we can argue and discuss this and say, well, people still don't know it's advertising because Google goes through changes and, and actually revises some of the way they look sometimes to hide the ads. But most people today want the solutions and they're coming to the people uh, you know, the, who provide the solutions more than people who advertise that they have this product. Most, most of the time I feel like that because content, I'm a content guy. And I believe that people, when they look for solutions, want to do their homework. In fact, one of the things we prove time and time over to ourselves is before the phone rings, just like I got the call yesterday from this guy who Googled manufacturer reward programs. Before he, before he called us, he was doing his research. He clearly, came, and he told, he told one of our staff, he says, I'm going to call other people. I just want you to be up front like that. We said we wouldn't expect you not to do that. You want to do due diligence, right? So I only feel that Google, when they serve up ads, are, they're the ones making the money. They're the ones that are, are being paid based on the search criteria that people are looking for for words. Like, you know, New York lawyer, you know, one of the highest paid, paid words that I think they charge $500 per hit. 
That's a lot of money for people like us. For people in my audience, $40 is a lot of money. I have a client who wants to spend $75 a day on Google AdWords, and we're gonna work with them on that. We're gonna take that money and we're gonna give it to Google, but what I'm doing is I'm doing research, at least four hours of research before that, to find out which words are gonna pay off for him. Because Google will eat up those $75 in about four seconds. I'm just telling you now. I hope I answered your question. Because I, I feel strongly, but I'm willing to bend. I'm not like a tree that you gotta really have a hurricane to blow me down. Thank you for the question, Karen. Good to see you in the audience. I don't know what next year is going to look like. I was on a, a, a Builder, uh, it's actually Myers Research. They've been having this every week since the virus hit, and they don't know what's going to happen. Look what happened last Friday. Everybody thought, you know, oh, my God, it's depressing, and suddenly we've got 2 million jobs, and some people will call that fake news. Who cares, right? No one knows. If no one knows, you got to know. And the way you know is by doing your homework. You investigate, you get on the phone, you talk to people. The phone is one of the most underutilized tools you have besides your website. The phone will give you access. Well, Jim, they're just not answering their phone. Leave them messages. They'll answer the phone. You can get to anybody these days. And if they can't, go through the social media. But you don't know what they're going to look like. You don't know what you don't know what business is going to look like. I do know one thing that's going to be true in 2021, 2022, 2023. May I share it with you? May I share it with you? Your website. Your website is never ever unless the internet, you know, blows up, is never going to lose its importance. In fact, as social media platforms, this is Jim Nowakowski's personal prediction. As social media platforms continue to grow in power and become publishers, not platforms, your website is going to become even more important because that's the way you're going to get to people on the Internet. I'm serious. It's going to take a while, maybe not in our lifetimes, but that's what's going to happen. Because remember, once you enter the platform, like a Twitter or a Facebook or whatever, a Yelp, you're at the mercy of the platform. You have no control over what they will do to you and your website. Whereas if you're on the Internet, it's just you and the people you talk to on the Internet. Isn't that great? That's true freedom. Commanding the... You've heard about what's going on in politics, right? Read this thing by Colonel you know, Gerard Pierre. Social media is informational warfare. If you need this, I'll send you the link. This is one of the most compelling things about the 2016 election. And the, and the whole Russian uh, hoax that was perpetrated. They were using robots, but not to the extent people thought, right? This is an amazing document. And that's why, you know, I understand robots, and that's probably why I'm not anti-programmatic, but I'm anti-programmatic. AI, artificial intelligence. I don't know that it's ever going to replace a human interaction. So you have to define what you want, not what Jim Nolkowski wants, what you want. Rethink your website like you would a project. A client gives you a project, what do you do? You go through a planning stage, you go through a discovery phase. Do it the same way. Define what your site is and what it should be. And all the functionality. Do I need a blog like Jim said? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And don't move your definition to avoid costs. This is the time to spend the money in the planning stage. The last thing you want to do is build your website and then say, oops, I forgot something. And now you got to go back and reconfigure the whole thing. Quality is very important. You want a professional image. Always project professionalism. I, I stopped wearing ties because no one comes to the office, but I wore ties every day because I don't know who's going to walk in the door. You don't know who's going to Google you. You don't know how they're going to come to your website. So look professional. If you're going to, you know, you're under construction, don't just hang up, a, you know, I'm under construction. Do something clever. Do something creative. And don't look like a template. Jeff Lewis is a famous guy, right? We all know him. I found out about him through one of my people that work for me. I'm going to take you through a progressive site. He rebuilt, he rebuilt his site. He's not a static guy. He changed his site, but he didn't change it. He changed it from this to this, and then he changed it from this 
to this. And this is the look he stayed with. He just added a few more boxes. This is his current site. But you see how he revolved. The question you have to ask yourself, who or what is the brand? Jeff Lewis is the brand. Is your company your brand? It's Ferguson. Ferguson, are they the brand or are the products they sell the brands? These are very complex questions, but how you define them will define your site. Like Don's Appliance, that's his brand. Don's Appliance, you saw that, right? But he's selling the heck out of all of the appliances brands that he sells. He, he sub subordinates himself to the brands he's selling. I don't know you want to do that because you're the brand, like like the architect site you saw. His content becomes his brand. The way he handled that gym in Wisconsin becomes his brand. His work becomes his brand. Make your site visual, very important. Pictures are worth a thousand words, just caption them. You know, manufacture, they love, if you're a designer and if you're a showroom, manufacturers have tons of product photos. Grab them, use them. Put them on your website. Talk. Don't just show a toilet. Show a toilet in an application, right? In a beautiful bathroom that you design. Don't just put a slab up there and say nine ninety five. Put it in context. Take that. Take that context into it. This is what it really looks like. This is the same product, ladies and gentlemen. Don't assume that clients can visualize everything. Put it in the visual, and then put a caption to it. And talk about it. Talk about the many applications. Remember, Google reads everything. And be creative. Can we be creative? Right? Let's be creative, but don't be too creative. You don't want to be too creative. What does that mean, Jim? I mean, you can get carried away. Can I give you an example? This is an architectural firm from down under, Geoform. This is what their website looked like. How would you like to arrive at a website that looked like this? I would think I'm watching that movie with uh, Kurt, it's not Kurt Russell, Russell Crowe, right? Where he had that brain thing. I forgot the name of the movie. But he had he was a genius, right? This is what he looked, this is what it looks like. This is what it became. And this is what it is now. You see, you and I and Geoform, we're, we're in evolution. We are evolving. And as we evolve, we change. What is, the, what is the saying? Adapt, change, or disappear. I don't know anyone in business that wants to disappear. Do you? So you have to adapt and change. And because we're in such a disruptive climate today, you have to really be thinking about how you want to change before you change. You have to determine your change. You don't, you don't want to just react to things. You want to think it through. You have to think it through. Very important. And get social. I I know, Jim, but aren't you just saying that it's a platform? What, you don't want me using platforms? No, 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 I didn't say that. I say, remember, it's a platform. You have to be social. That's how you connect. I was on the webinar yesterday with three panelists, very high-end people, discussing wonderful things. If you want to, I'll send you the notes, right, from the Luxury Institute. It was a great webinar on value. Right, I'm already linked in to one of them. He was a, he was an ex-military guy. He's a mathematician. He's a perfect guy for me to talk to. I he he talked to me on LinkedIn. I invited him to connect. He connected, and now we're going to talk next week. That's how you do it. Well, Jim, how does that represent revenue to you? Who cares? You're going to get knowledge. You see, unduplicated knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, is one of my pillars. And if it's not one of your pillars, it should be. You have to try to know everything because we're in that world where everything relates to everything else. I'm not kidding you. The slightest thing you can think of might have an impact on your business. Support your website. Don't just build it and twiddle your thumbs and wait. Do marketing. Promote it. That's why blogs, be on, you know, and you promote your blogs on the social media platforms. I sent a postcard that I received four years, I mailed it four years ago, and it showed up in my, in my uh, office the other day. I took a picture of it and, and posted it on Twitter and LinkedIn. That little, because my question was, where was it been for four years? I got more reaction to that, that, that silly question. It wasn't a silly question. 
than I did for many of my other things I do, you see? So you never know. By the way, I'm still waiting to find out where it's been for four years. I've asked my postal carrier, Lou, the greatest postal carrier in the world. Anyway, integrate your site, do direct mail, do phone, and make connections to your clients. Let me recap, because we're almost out of time. Define who you're aiming at. Find your value. Turn your value into differentiation. And use that differentiation on your website. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you know, we all talk about Amazon, the dreaded beast, right? Amazon has 331 million pages, which is why when you search for products per se, they're often in page one. They're often there. They don't need to advertise, though they do. They spend a lot of money, right? But they're there because they have 331 million. Jim, I can't possibly have 331 million pages. Of course you can't. But you could still beat Amazon and Google at their own game because Google has 584 million. 584 million. <laughs> you know? Who can compete? You can compete. You can compete because Google especially needs your content. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the dirty little secret. Google needs your content in order to sell their AdWords. Did you understand? Do you understand that? Have you any concept of that? Let me give you the concept. Let me say that again. Google needs your content so they can spider it and algorithm it and index it so they can start selling AdWords around it. Google, that's why they're very rich. They figured it out very early. And the way you beat Google at their own game is by being in the organic search when they're when they're paying people no one would buy ads around you know conversation from hell right who would buy an ad around that that's why there are no ads only the devil wouldn't he doesn't need it there's plenty of work for him right so that's just an experiment in seo who would buy an ad around never lower your price when they hit my page i would think there's some consultants that would but i don't sell advertising like that i want to share the knowledge with you so do you have questions? Whoa, I was talking a lot. Let me see. Any questions? Oh, I got some questions. The movie is The Beautiful Mind by K. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. I, I can't tell what your initial K. But yes, person. <laughs> the, the movie was A Beautiful Mind by with Russell Crowe. It was a great movie. I remember it. And when I saw that guy's website, that's what it reminded me of is Russell Crowe's board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I got another one. Thank you for your comments on my site. You're very welcome. Uh, so I'm so excited to see if... Deb, thank you so much for your comment. I, I wish I could review everybody that was in the audience, but I can't. And I wish I could. So let's let's wind it up because I don't see any other questions. I don't think I do. All right. Some people are already leaving the room. Don't leave the room. Any questions about the webinar? Jim Nowakowski, Jim at innerlinegroup.com. You can call me, 847-358-4848. If you go to innerline.com backslash evaluate uh, and you evaluate this session, I'll give you a copy of our guides. We have eight guides. You can follow me on Twitter. I love to tweet. I don't tweet as often as I should anymore because I'm doing more of this stuff. Or you can go to the Continuing Architect, which has got six of my courses online there. There's the address. Uh, our webinar is coming up. We have another one on Friday for manufacturers. And then we have these other lists every second Tuesday of the month. I want to just say thank you so much for attending. But before you go, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a word from our sponsor. I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that uh, slide up back again in a moment. But KB Resource is our sponsor. KB Resource is a media outlet. The designers in the audience, the manufacturers in the audience, the architects in the audience, everybody in the audience, I want you to look at the address down below, editor at kbresource.com, and send the editor information, especially calling your attention to their section on their website called KBtivity. It's kind of like creativity. These are featured designers. Kim Eggert was the first one on the bottom there. Kim Eggert is a member of one of these associations we've presented to. Kim Eggert, Kim Eggert, Kim Eggert 
a couple of years ago, did the White House, you know, flower arrangement at the White House. And when I first met Kim, I said, did you publicize that? She said, no, other people depended on it. And now it's the basis of her website. This is very important. It doesn't matter what you think about the president or the future or the past presidents. When you get a job like this, she says, but I don't understand why nobody knows about it. I said, well, how many other designers did they hire to do the White House? She goes, 70. I said, okay. So you got to stand, you got to differentiate yourself, and now she does. I invite all of you to go to kbresource.com, look it over, check it out, and then mail the editor uh, with your ideas if you want, like to be part of KBTivity. And I'd like to thank him so much for sponsoring this. Once again, this is Jim Nolkowski. I think Linda has her hand up before I go. Hold on. Oh, I, I don't see. It was just a hand up. I don't know if she has a question. Thank you. There's my phone number. There's my email. Thank you so much for spending an hour of your time. I hope you got something out of it. Take care, stay safe, and let's go get them. Let's keep pounding at it for business. <laughs>